Um, welcome, everybody. Okay. Last year, I stole one of the most closely guarded secrets in the hedge fund industry, and, and I built into this amazing thing. And today, I'm going to show you how you can use it to 10x your investment returns on autopilot, no matter what the market does. And I set myself a little challenge here uh, because I'm a degenerate in ways, and I'm going to turn $5,000 into $1 million this year. I'm going to do it right in front of you. I'd like to invite you to join me if, you, if you're also stupid like me. Um, but for something different, we're going to do it all on a public wallet. So it's not just like me sending out the wins that I've got and forgetting about the losers. So you can see the winners and the losers and see everything that I do, all the thousands of trades I'm going to make this year. And, and uh, fuck it, we ball. I'm going to double that million dollar stack again and again and again until it's 10x. And I'm going to do it completely on autopilot. And when I say 10x returns on autopilot, you might think that's hype. But since 2019, what I'm going to show you has turned a $10,000 starting investment into $203,000. That's a 20.3x. It's a little more than that, actually, now, because we've had a good couple of months, right? And we rolled this out to customers on the 14th of April, 2023. And a skeptic would have said that I was full of shit. And, and maybe I'm just a big talking marketing asshole, all hat, no cattle. And there's no way that we could get those kinds of world-beating returns and that it was just going to be like a promise not to come in your mouth kind of situation. And, and there's no way we could really double our money every year from crypto, at least not spending hours a day on research or day trading and certainly not completely hands off. And after all, everyone knows that crypto is either feast or famine. Like, you know, you either make a lot of good money in the good times, then get fucked and it's going to be okay. And then you're fucked and then it's going to be okay. And then you're fucked and then it's boring and it's amazing. And, Everyone knows that crypto is like this, right? Everyone knows that there's no way to make a stable and consistent income from crypto, but they're dead wrong. So let's go to the videotape. Let's see how well we've kept our promises. And I mean, I'm not talking about back tests or predictions or any of that bullshit. We're talking about real cash money in people's, in people's accounts. On the 14th of April this year, we've been running it ourselves for 10 months, confident enough to, to roll it out to our best customers. On that date, Bitcoin was at $40,119. And if our customers left their, their crypto in Bitcoin, they were in for an emotional roller coaster. They really were. All the way from $40,000 to $15,932. 60% paper loss. And if they didn't pussy out paper handed, they had a thrilling, stunning, historic come from the one, come from behind victory all the way to the heady heights of today's price, $43,091. A massive or puny, depending on how you look at it, 7.4% return on their investment at a time when you can get 5% in the bank. Fuck on out of here with that. If they were unlucky, that's if they're in Bitcoin, which is the blue chip one. If, they, if they're if unlucky enough to have their money in the so-called blue chip altcoins, I mean the big ones that everyone likes, they're in a world of bag holder hurt. Ethereum down 27% from that day, BNB down 52%, Uni down 62%, Matic down 30%. And that's if they're in the blue chips. You know, if they're in the smaller stuff, those things are still down, like even after the rally, 80, 90%, some of them. Now, in that same time frame, the press button make money system you'll discover today is on track. To, we're on track to double those customers' money this year, like clockwork. And not only that, we've gotten those results with average drawdowns of ten percent. This is the real money result since the uh, since we launched it in, in April this year. The worst drawdown was twenty percent. The average drawdown is ten percent, and you can see that since the bull run started, we had one just dipping past 10%, 12% for one day. And then the recent little shit scare that, you know, scared the hose last week, um, that was like 6% after a day. Not bad. Last week, many of the so-called blue chip coins crashed 20% in an hour and our system anticipated and sidestepped the carnage, limited losses to 7%. And it made them all back. This was that day. And it made them all back the next day. 
And now we're at all time highs. Promises made, promises kept. So what you're going to see today, what no one else has figured out yet, is the big problem. The big problem with crypto, if you think two moves ahead, is we're all going to make a lot of money in this bull run. You don't even need me. You don't even need to be good. If you hold a random selection of altcoins, you're probably going to, you know, at least 5x your money in the next year. But how are you going to keep that? And what you're going to discover today is you don't have to worry about keeping your crypto riches when the bull market ends. So you can safely YOLO into some of these absolutely irresponsible degenerate coin plays like that we're in right now. Like, let's just take a look. Come on. And these degenerate coins, they have the best names ever. It's scary stuff to be in. I mean, I put five grand into this stupid cock in you coin because I thought the name was stupid and I thought the story was good. This was not a pumped system coin. This is this is just like this one was obvious. Turned $5,000 into $80,000 this week. The fuck on out of here. But how am I going to keep that money? I mean, that's what I'm going to show you today. And we bought here. Um, when I made the slide yesterday, it was 58. Now it's 80. Oh, you know, just a quick 30 grand overnight off five grand, an additional six decks overnight. This is the kind of shit that we're pulling off. But how are we going to keep that money? How do we know? I'm already feeling the feelings, right? Like I'm already excited. You know, excitement proceeds acting like a fuckhead, acting like a fuckhead proceeds losing money like a fuckhead. Um, feeling smart proceeds looking stupid. Um, how are we going to keep all that money? And I mean, you know, we we did it before. Like I fumbled the bag on on uh, on Bonk. I got out um, way too early. I think it was here. It was one? It was around this dip, and then it you know it ten x past that. But some of our members didn't listen to me, and they kept it. So so I'm grateful for that. And you know we short. You know we're not just doing it on the long side. I shorted FTT a couple of days ago. We took profits down here and still got half running. Um, the hundred x coin club is really really working great. But it's so crazy, high risk, thrills and spills, ups and downs. We've got to find a way to get that into being, we, we've got to find a way to make sure we keep that money. We're making a lot of money. There's two games. There's the making it and there's the keeping it and then there's the growing it. And we've got to do that. So what I'm going to show you today, it transcends any bad crypto market news like an exchange collapse, like the ETF getting denied, like any of that bullshit that's going to disrupt the markets. We're always going to have bad news. It's crypto. It's the most powerful trading strategy by far ever created. It's the only trading strategy proven by Nobel Prize economists and hedge funds alike to actually beat the market over a 200-year period. It's the only strategy that outperforms every other strategy, literally every other market out there. It's got a, actually a 200 year track record of working it does its best work in the chaotic times so when the market shits the bed it's it's like really really good it works in up and in down markets so we're not in this situation where we're not in hotel california where you're always up but you can never check out of the casino it requires no thinking no luck no stress and no predictions like ian when was the last time you checked your finner account like I check mine about once a week, right? It's around about that now. Now I've calmed down with it. Do you do you have any feelings about it? Does it does it does it give you the thrill of victory or the agony of defeat? It kind of did at first when it was new, but now it's just this thing that I just don't have to give any emotional time to at all. Yeah, couldn't be easier. Requires no thinking, no luck, and most of all, no predictions. We're going to dig into today, and it's created countless, well, not countless, but a shitload of billionaires and multimillionaires. Like this guy, John Henry, um, $4 billion net worth, owns Liverpool Football Club, Boston Red Sox, and some racing team. I don't know what that is. He made every single dollar he's ever made doing this on tart fire markets. Now, my own personal results... I have, uh, um, when I pivoted to crypto, I took the money that I used to trade in in traditional finance trend following, and I dumped it into this fund in 2020 when we started this business, and these are my returns. And the grub stake that I had in traditional finance right now is $4.3 million and counting. 
and growing 18%, 32%, 89%, 53%. And this is in traditional finance, like oil and gold and gas and shit like that. It's just so much better in crypto. It's like so much better in crypto. And it's a very well-proven strategy. It's making me rich. Like I like I have my retirement goals sorted and and uh, I'm just with this, not even counting crypto. And crypto's going to turn it into overdrive. So, so when you take this strategy and you plug it into crypto, what we universally see with every single thing that works in, in traditional finance, you plug it into crypto because crypto is riskier. You would expect a higher return. And that's exactly what you see. So our benchmark is against Bitcoin. Bitcoin goes up and down and up and then it breaks your heart and then it looks like it's going to be good and then it shits the bed and it looks like it's going to be okay. Maybe we're going to make it. And then, oh, you broke my heart. And then it's coming back, but it's coming back from there. You're still like completely underwater. And most people only got interested in crypto here and here. So most people, serious bag holders, Compared to our system, it's smooth and consistent. It does have long sideways periods, then it makes money, sideways periods, then it makes money, sideways periods, but you don't lose money. And and it's very clockwork kind of, kind of thing. And as you'll see so shortly, I created a simple system that puts the whole thing on autopilot. And I didn't discover any of this. I just stole it from one of the most powerful, well, all, I stole. I, first of all, I stole the details from from Man AHL, and today I'm going to tell you the crazy story of how I did it, how it's going to make you twice as rich in the next twelve months. But before we get to that, until now, this really wasn't available to most people. So most of these funds um, require at least a million bucks in investment capital to talk to them. Some of them five million, and the reason for that is if you're going to, well, a lot of them require. Even if you wanted to try to do this on your own, like I did for years and years and years you really need about 500k minimum just to cover the the, the margin requirements on every futures contract you, you you want to trade like crude oil is a thousand barrels of oil it's a, it's eighty dollars a barrel that's an eighty thousand dollar contract you need to put up a lot of money to, to do that and you need like at least 25 I traded 32 and it wasn't ideal I really would have liked to have traded 50 markets at a time now I did it myself for years but I used to have to get up at 4 40 in the morning in Thailand Every day, I never missed a day. I used to arrange plane flights around the time of day that I couldn't be in the air. I do my work and I couldn't take a day off. And I got in hospital, I had the kidneys failed. I've got a tube sticking out of my neck. And here I am on video doing my trend following system. Couldn't take a day off, even with 2% kidney function and tube sticking out of my throat, about to die. Um, but I've changed that. So not only am I bringing this fantastic strategy to you after stealing it from an arrogant hedge fund manager who didn't think anyone without a PhD could even understand it, but I understand it uh, and you can understand it too. And what I have for you today is a fully automated press button make money system that can double your money this year. And with this system, your returns will demolish, absolutely demolish even the best investors on earth. The best hedge funds in the world, they do 12 to 15% a year. And that's going to double your money every five to six years, which is pretty sweet. Not going to lie. I'm very happy with doubling my money every five to six years. The system I'm going to show you today does 100% of you. With that, you're doubling your money every year. So you're quite literally getting richer five to six times faster than you could investing in with the best hedge funds on the planet, which is why I'm opening the kimono. So you're going to see today the secret source behind what these hedge funds are doing with nothing held back, all the intricate details about how this strategy works and why it works, what makes it everything proof? It's going to make you rich whether Bitcoin goes to a million dollars a coin or if the entire crypto market goes to zero, you can cheer for that. We're going to make out like bandits. If it, if, if, if crypto dies, we're in for a big win. And that's why I'm betting the farm on it. I mean, well, it's, it's not 70% of my net wealth in this, in this strategy. It's about, it's about 30% now, but, but it's going to be 70% by the end of the year. And the fully automated system I've created that can double your money this year in crypto with no trading background or technical skills needed, even if you've never bought crypto or you never bought any financial asset before. But let's go back in time for a second, because you might think that I'm just a crypto guy, but the reality is that crypto is just a means to an end for me. And I'm really just a, I'm really just a systems guy first. Like if a new asset came along that I thought was better, my systems worked better on, I'd be all over that. 
And, you know, I've looked at things like trading carbon credits and electricity, like those are very attractive markets to me. If they're better than crypto, I'll, I'll switch out. Believe me, I, I'm in this to do my job as a provider for my family to help us live the lives of our dreams. And I, I'm not in this for fancy cars or designer clothes, a dress like a homeless guy anyway, or a big mansion. Well, I, I don't want a big mansion, but I want a nice house. So I'm in this to hit my number and walk away. I want to spend time with my family. I want to watch my daughter grow into a fine young woman. I want to walk along the beach watching the sunset every day with my wife. That we do every day. You, you know, I'm in this to do what I want, when I want, with who I want, for however long I want. And I want to do all the stuff that I want to do. And I want to do it free from worry or fear. I don't ever want to have to give a fuck about money ever again. I'm fucking done with that. And I'm here to help you do the same. So I'm going to go wherever that wherever we have the easiest path for making those things happen, whether it's crypto, whether it's arbitrage on vintage dildos, whether it's electricity trading or carbon credits or any fucking thing. I'll trade Pokemon cards. I don't give a fuck. Now, let me take you back in time and let me show you the strange chain of events that led me to creating what I think is, well, it's definitely my best system ever. I think it's the best trend following system in the world today. And plenty of professional institutional traders are agreeing with me now. It's truly one of a kind. No one else is doing anything even close to this. So it's 2007. It's my first year of full-time trading. And I was up big then. I was up like 900 grand. And, and, and that was a lot of money to me back then. That was more than my whole trading career at that point. And, and I was playing the game and winning big. And I was doing everything like kind of discretionary, technical analysis, reading the news, paying for stuff like that. I thought I was the shit and I thought I couldn't lose. And then 2008 happened. And it happened on a number of levels for me because I was – Falls long in real estate in beachfront real estate in Australia, which is the very worst thing to be. Um, I, I, I was I had a, a lending business. I, I, um, I was doing quite a quite a lot of I guess what you call it loan shark adjacent stuff, and of course no one can pay back in in the GFC. And I, and I had a bunch of shares, and and I got I got hurt at the exact time that it hurt to get hurt and I didn't see it coming and it absolutely wrecked me and I had a big problem you know I got a big reminder from the market that hey dude you're not that smart you really aren't that smart and if you can't predict the 2008 and I didn't predict 2020 either like if I'm going to get back 90% of the money I make when things like that happen then this investing game you shouldn't do it it's too hard you shouldn't do it but I didn't give up Went back to my roots. I reread one of the best books on trading and, and investing ever written called Market Wizards. And featured in the book is a guy called Ed Sakota. In fact, all of the early guys in this first Market Wizard books, which I recommend you read, they're all trend traders. And this guy is known for having arguably the best track record of all time. So there's plenty. He's not a billionaire. He's, a, he's only worth 100 million bucks. But he started with five grand and he turned it to... I think it was 12 million, 10 million in 12 years. And and so that's the archetype of little guy. That's what I wanted to be for little guys, regular guys like us, starting with small stakes. You know, it's it's one thing for Warren Buffett to go and do it. It's it's another thing for a little guy to do it. And he started with five thousand dollars and it was actually fifteen million dollars in 12 years. And to me, if you if you work out the compound rate of return, it's unmatched. Even today, peerless absolutely unmatched in the history of finance. This guy has, he's not the best trader ever. Our systems are much better than his now because it's, you know, it's not 1970s, it's like 2020s. But pure rate of compounding return, no one's ever beaten it. And this was exactly the kind of path I wanted to follow when, when I'd been cut off at the new knees. I knew I had to turn the little nut that I had left. You know, you remember I was down so bad, so bad. I was like, really hurting and this was it for me this is what i wanted to do so i found i found ed online and he, he runs this self-help group called the trading tribe which i joined and i went every week for um over two years and I stayed up till midnight every wednesday to talk to the dude and flew down to sydney to be part of it and and ed was a fucking problem he was a really weird guy and he would never give specifics about his trading systems he, he would never give me the rules and but he'd sing these weird songs about trading, and he would bring his banjo. He'd put, ding, 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 ding. He's doing this bullshit that he always did, and he and he's singing. 
what do we do when we get a trend? We ride that sucker right to the end. And one good trend pays for them all. He'd had all these stupid little sayings that are stuck in my head. And it started me on a journey to really understand what trend is, why it works in a mathematical sense. And I became fascinated and I became obsessed with this concept of trend following. And no one's, no one in the history of obsession has ever been more obsessed with trend following than me. And one of the first things I found out was this really interesting story about how, how trend following, the, there was a, a Nobel Prize winner's theory um, and they almost made him give him give his Nobel Prize back. So this guy called Cliff Asnes, he he's now a multi billionaire. He runs the second or third biggest third third biggest hedge fund, hedge fund in the world. He was the student at University of Chicago. He was he did his PhD his PhD supervisor was Eugene Farmer, the guy on the right. Um, and 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 Gene Farmer is finance royalty. He invented the efficient markets hypothesis, which says that you cannot beat the market. It means that you can't beat the market. You shouldn't try. You should just invest in index funds. And Cliff, his student, he wrote a paper that disproved it. And, he's, and, and you know, this was so heretical in the finance world at the time that it's astonishing that he didn't get chucked out of the university. And it turns out that Farmer was completely wrong. Cliff's, stuff, Cliff's idea was so rock solid that Farmer admitted that he'd been bested. He, he, he admitted that there was a way to beat the market. And Farmer called what Asnes academically published, but trend-falling guys like Sakoda had known for decades, that he called this the premier anomaly in finance. This is the anomaly to the efficient markets hypothesis. And this and this means that trend-falling is the exception to the rule, the thing that beats the market. And it only got better from there. So I started looking into all the other funds using this trend-falling idea. And, and these guys are crushing it. And one of the original guys is, is, is Bill Dunn. And uh, I know a bunch of people at his firm. They've done 17% compounding returns, but with an average drawdown of 36%, which is a bit hard to wear. This is it compared to buy and hold investing. You can see they're like nearly 10 times, well, eight times beating the S&P over that time. Average returns 17%. The system I've created returns 100%, which is like, a lot better. The average drawdown is ten is eight point three percent actually. So your drawdowns are literally a quarter of the size. You make nine times more money. You keep four times less of it. This is the firm I was talking about that I have uh, uh, that I dumped my money in in twenty twenty. It, it's their name is Mulvaney Capital. I really like them. I know the people. I love them. Um, they've done great. They've done well. It's now fifteen percent a year on average over thirty years with thirty three percent realized volatility. You know, we're getting 100% a year and our drawdowns are way less. They've got all, look at these massive drawdowns that you have to wear. We get, a, our drawdowns are a quarter the size. This is Winton Capital. So this is a large modern CTA trend following firm. This is more like what we're doing. And it's immediately obvious that the returns are smoother because we're doing the, the modern version here. But the returns are not nearly as good as us on crypto, they're doing 12.5% a year with 16% volatility. We're beating the, the pants off these guys. We're beating them like redheaded stepchildren on pure returns and drawdowns. We're not just making more money than they've been able to make in a single year, and we're keeping more of it too. So after I found out how awesome Trend was, I decided to give it um, a try myself. This was my first big year with Trend. I'd managed to turn 600 into 900 in the first year, and I was hooked. Like finally, I can I I can I can do this. Like trend is the left curve edge. If you want to do like stat up or relative value trading or, or macro trading like Ray Dalio, you have to be really really smart. You can be a dumb fuck like me and still make money off trend, and I prove that. And while trend is has made me quite a lot of money, it's a lot of work. It's not it, it, the the work ground my health down to be honest. And the the biggest problem I found for most people is that you have to have a lot of money up front. Most of these hedge funds require, you know, at least 150 grand. Some of them a million. Some of them five million. Asnes requires five million to talk to him. Fuck off. Um, a lot. If you wanted to do this on your own, you'd need to start with 500k, and even then, it's not ideal. But I found a way around all that. And for that, we have to fast forward to 2014. It was on my buddy's yacht. It's not like that. It's like a, a 55 foot boat, but it's still a cool boat. And this guy was. You, you, if you imagine a balding fat stoner nerd who moved to Thailand because he could bang hookers and get drunk and stoned every day. That's the guy. Like, whatever you think, balding, fat, 
arrogant computer guy. He, he'd sit around and get stoned all day. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Uh, you, you know, I just knew that, you know, that's not for me. Um, not that there's anything wrong with getting stoned. I do get stoned every now and again, but I, but I don't want to be a drug fucked loser. And anyway, I came to find out, I didn't know the full story about this guy. He's made a life changing sum of money from crypto. Like he was minted. He was one of those early crypto dudes and he's just living out his, his best life. And, and, you know, he bought the boat and the boat's parked in front of this fabulous beachfront mansion in Krabi, which is the nicest beach in Thailand. And, you know, I had another buddy that was the same basic type type of guy, a bit better. He was a, a, an English teacher and English, if anyone knows Thailand, English teaching is the profession that you can get into when, when nothing else is available. You can, you can lob into Thailand with no money and, and completely broke and, and you can get a job as an English teacher straight away anywhere. And you can grind out some sort of a, you know, slightly above poverty life. But this guy, he's he, he's he's buying an Audi. He bought a beach house on some really beautiful house. Like, I'd love to own that house. And and these guys are living the dream. And it wasn't until I found out, out they, they made a bunch of money in crypto that I understand how they did it. And I was the first to admit, I thought crypto was a joke. Uh, I mean, you know, today, I'm some kind of degenerate rooting for this coin we got into yesterday called Dog with Nunchucks. Spelt W I F. Like you might think I'm like that, but that then I didn't. I, I didn't hate crypto. I just wasn't interested. You know, I traded real markets, and I'm like, I'm a professional. I do trend following and real markets. Um, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a pretender. And I had a few bitcoins from the early days, and to shut my buddies up, I bought five more in 2017 at the exact worst time, 15k each. And then Bitcoin went crazy, and then I was trading alts, and I tripled my money in three months. And then the bear market came, and I got wrecked, and I didn't sell right away, and I was just down bad, like over 90% before I cut the cord. But I knew there was something there. And so my first shot at this was a system I created called the Automated Wealth Creation Engine, working on cross-sectional trend and with very minimal effort. It worked great, better than better than I, 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 I could have expected. I personally made 700K in just under a year from it. Um, I gave back about, 35% before I cut the cord on it. A bunch of other people made a lot of money from it too. And the big innovation I've discovered, and what I think is the greatest discovery in little guy finance, is that when you apply the very well-proven battle-tested strategy of trend following to crypto, it does better than the hedge funds do in traditional markets. And not just by a little, it works like six times better than they've ever been able to make it work. And, and this unlocks, it makes it possible to double your money this year. And what I didn't expect is that trend removes all this crazy bullshit that you get with crypto. You, you know, altcoins in bear markets go down like 95 to 97%. And, and we're not anything like that. These are our drawdowns since 2019. Like it takes the swings out of it, which, which is why the system I've created is able to be profitable every single year, no matter what the broader market's doing. Now, I know what you're thinking. Is what I told my dad when I when I said, "Dad, you know, Bitcoin's sixteen thousand. Like, you should probably throw throw hundred hundred G's in this." It's like no rational person would invest in this right now, and and that would be the case if you're doing it like anyone else is. What I'm talking about today isn't really about crypto. It's like I mentioned before, I'm a systems guy, so I go with where my systems perform best. If there was a market that was better, I'd be all over it. Today really is about the time tested, battle proven trend following strategy and how it works and everything works better actually in crypto and there's reasons for that but trend is the foundation of the whole thing the base of the system i built isn't specific to crypto it's universally the easiest and best and most robust edge in any market it just works better in crypto because crypto moves more often more force with any other market in history and we see this again and again and again you know, we didn't choose crypto because we're some crypto fanboys. We move, we chose crypto because crypto has inherently fat tails, and by fat tails, I mean hundred to one, thousand to one outlier wins are not common in the stock market. Happen every day in in the crypto mines. Now, the first system it worked pretty well on the way up, but it wasn't perfect. Um, it designed us to put it in, into cash when the bear market came. It, it shoved it back into cash. It, it, it got us into Bitcoin pretty early and then got out of Bitcoin into cash when Bitcoin was was at 25,000. We kept most of it, but it just wasn't very satisfying. And, and you know, it's a very unappealing proposition to make money one out of every five years and spend the rest of the time waiting. So the perfect 
fixed system has to work in bull markets, bear markets, ostrich markets, any kind of markets. It's got to perform well, no matter what happens, when exchanges collapse, when banks collapse, when scam coins, with moon coins. Next system has to work no matter what. It has to be robust. It has to be anti-fragile. It has to have big returns and it has to have very low drawdowns. And one day I'm listening to my favorite trend following podcast, Top Traders Unplugged. It, it all came together. And so it's kind of like a nerdy podcast for people in the industry. And, and these two hedge fund managers, there's two broad types of, of, of trend following system. And I'm in one camp and, and the original sort of turtle guys are in the other camp. And it's a holy war, like they hate each other. And these two guys are arguing with each other and they're getting into this really heated argument. These are uh, these are guys who who work for who work for like Man AHL, which is like a hundred and fifty billion dollar hedge fund, and and uh, um, Chesapeake Capital, which is which is like a, a smaller hedge fund, like three hundred million or something, but with a forty year track record. And they're getting into it arguing, and they're arguing about all the details. And mine's better because of this, and mine's better because of that. And they got more and more and more and more technical. And I'm like, guys, you shouldn't be fucking saying this. And and they're just openly sharing exactly the construction of their signals, exactly their portfolio construction, exactly how they did it. And I'm like, yeah. And and you know, rewatched a couple of times, and then I have 13 pages of hand scribble notes that were eventually turn into a fully automated press button make money system with the power to make anyone pretty rich pretty fast. So I started researching all these hedge funds, and what I, what I found when I did was the real shocker and these guys all publish PhD research and and lots of lots of uh, papers in 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 the Journal of Finance and these like like hoity-toity academic papers and they're all there and I it was just a really simple process of spidering out all the people on the podcast and all the people who work for them and all the people who work at their funds like thank you LinkedIn and and then reading all their PhD papers and academic research I got a giant file and you know. Yeah, I'm sure they're real smart, but book smarts don't always equate to street smarts. And I found everything, all the math, everything I needed to replicate exactly what those funds were doing. Nothing about this, to my great surprise, was a secret. It was just all out there on the internet waiting for some hard-headed motherfucker just to put the pieces together. And I'd already figured out how to make trend work and crypto on the way up. And I knew a fair bit about it. I'd done it for years and years and years. And now I had the secret source on how to go from amateur level to pro level, how to make it work all the time. And I thought to myself, well, how fucking hard could it be? Like, I'm a smart guy. Oh, fuck it. We will all figure it out. And it turns out it was pretty hard. I'm not going to lie. Needed to level up substantially. And... It was worth it because it doesn't just work. It works better than literally anything else out there. Now, the first step in, in creating the system I'm about to show you was getting a mass tutor, and that was the highlight of my week. I kind of like stochastic calculus now. Um, and, you know, I I feel like I'm about not quite PhD level in this stuff, but but I'm certainly well and truly into postgraduate level of of uh, of quant finance stuff certainly am and and once i felt like i understood all of this i called up uh, um uh, a guy i've known for 25 years who's you know top 500 in the world programmer called uh timon who's our cto and he used to build online banking apps and i stole him to work on my system he'd been a failed retail trader before and he wanted back he wanted some revenge and some payback and we started by replicating man ahl which was the biggest hedge fund in the space i figured that was the play and and we were able to replicate their exact returns to within like 0.1 of a percent. That gave us the confidence that the system was good enough as a first version. So a couple of years ago, year and a half ago now, maybe a bit more, I turned it loose on crypto and the rest is history. And it's been trading since then. We rolled it out to clients on the 14th of April this year. The real world results matched up with the back test as in what's in the box matches what's on the label. Um, first for me. And I mean, we didn't end up with just some theory that um, that doesn't work in reality. And we created something that looked good in testing and performance just as well in the real world. And right now, we're doing such original work in the trend following space that I've got, you know, billion dollar hedge fund managers sliding into my DMs, like like talking signal construction with me and, and treating me like, like I'm just a bump treating me like I'm an equal and we spend all day like like yabbering with the best quants in the world guys like 
uh, um, guys like Corey, who runs the Flirting with Models podcast, like Macro Cephalopod, who runs a sharp $4 billion hedge fund, like Robot James, who's 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 one of my really good mates now, uh, probably the best quant I've ever met. And just by fucking around and finding out, like we're, like we're doing this, we're doing this, and we've got an enormous team now. We hired, because Timon's like a, world-class engineer we wanted a world-class engineering shop and we've hired uh timon james itacorn jack two south african guys yeah it's a six person it's a six programmer team and this brings us to why we're, we're, we're all here today, because this is the accomplishment of my life and it's 100% fully automated set. Forget it. The system is quite literally my life's work. I'm so proud. Of it. I'm beyond proud of it, actually. First thing I've ever done that's world class. Um, it's called FinRev. I'm happy to be sharing it with you. It's short for financial revolution because that's what it truly is. It's a financial revolution. It's why it gives the little guy a leg up, why it levels the playing field, why it's a genuine opportunity to break the chains for people who have never had that opportunity before. It will shine through pretty nicely. And I shit you not, I can hand on heart say you take a couple of minutes, press a couple of buttons, set this thing up, and it has and will again at least double your money this year without doing any work or paying any attention to it at all. And I pay, well, I can't say I pay that close attention to it, but I, because I'm like eyes on shit coins right now. But it wouldn't matter if I watched it or not. In fact, I could go on and on about how awesome it is, but why don't I just show you? Let's talk results. Um, well, those are a bit old results. I'll show you some, some updated results uh, in a minute. But you can see that as Bitcoin goes up or down and up and down, this thing just, just keeps pushing um it's profitable every single year um i've got some updated results to show you and these are them so the cumulative return 2636 percent at a compound annual growth rate of 97 percent a sharp ratio of 1.73 with 100 percent chance of that being so for those who know sortino ratio which is an alternate method of of, of rating trading system performance Three is considered the holy grail. We're at 2.93. We're so close. And volatility on a 45% volatility target is 45.25%. So what, what I mean is that we want to take, we want our account to wiggle 45% in an average year, and it does. Sometimes that, that wiggle can be up. And some, most of the time the wiggle is up. And... I don't want to just show you the best parts. I want to show you the worst parts. Like when Lunar and Three Arrows Capital happens, when 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 the SEC launch action against Binance, like the thing makes money in bad times. Why? Because it's it's a bet on surprise and, and we get it. And just last week, the rest of the market crashed. This doesn't look like it. This is our equity curve, but it crashed on the 11th. It, it, it crashed 25 to 30%, but we were down just a little bit and made it back the next day. And today, we're at all-time equity highs. And I just want to show you just quickly. Where is this? Let me just hope that I'm still working. All right. So that was the 11th from memory. So we're just going to go through some trade history and see what the system did that day. I'm a bit, it's a bit hard with Zoom here. Seventh. The eighth, got to be the ninth, tenth, eleventh. Okay. So the market took that dip on the eleventh. And let's look at what it did on the 12th. So we sold a little bit of Bitcoin cash, a little bit of Ethereum, a little bit of Bitcoin, a little bit of XRP. And basically we're trimming positions. So if you look at these amounts on Bitcoin, we're selling, you know, a couple of hundred bucks worth of Bitcoin. We're selling 
a third of an Ethereum, you know, 800 bucks. This is this is like, a, I think it's like a $100,000 account or something I'm just looking at. Um, so on a $100,000 account, you're looking at trimming up, you know, six or 700 bucks, um, 600 bucks, 1700 so about a thousand bucks there so you're trimming some and you're adding some so we're just playing around the edges we're not diving all in and then jumping all out and diving all in and jumping all out it's very very efficient it beats hedge fund returns by a mile you know these guys are one of the grand champions and they're only 17.2 percent you know this firm that that i think is great 14 percent um, you know, Winton is again, and we've been talking about sharp ratio. Sharp ratio is a batting average. And the rule of thumb is that 95% of hedge funds are below one sharp ratio. So one is excellent. And if we look at buy and hold stocks is about 0.4. The old school type of trend falling that we're looking at is 0.55 to 0.7. Warren Buffett over his career was 0.76. Bitcoin, if you held it over a 10 year hold, is only 0.81, which is surprising. Ray Dalio, 0.9, George Soros, 1. The modern trend following is 1 to 1.2. And us, we hover between 1.2 and, and actually we, we we sneaked up to 2. So we're between 1.2 and 2 sharp ratio and averaging about 1.7. Renaissance Technology, who are the guys, uh, the, the all-time grand champions, the greatest track record in the history of trading, they've done 66% of year compounding. They are at 2.5. I'm never going to be as good as them. They hire like... Nobel Prize winners and Fields Math Medal winners and everyone who works there is a billionaire. I, I ain't that good. Um, but we're within spitting distance of the... You can't invest in them, by the way. Um, we're within spitting distance of the best in the world. And Stevie Cohen, the guy who the TV show Billions is based on, uh, was caught insider trading. He's at 2.5, but he's stealing it. So our system, the bottom line is our system performs literally better than almost anything else other than, you know, illegal shit. And this isn't just about getting rich this year. It's about long-term life-changing wealth creation. And the longer crypto stays toxic for Wall Street, the longer that you ask institutional traders, do you want to get in? And I'm in touch with a guy who works for Paul Tudor Jones's um, hedge fund. And he says that it's career risk. I'd get fired if I suggested it. And... And the longer that happens, the less competition, the more inefficient the market is, the more money we're going to make. If crypto goes to zero, that premium is going to increase dramatically. We're going to make out great, especially if it gets banned, another big disaster. At a minimum, I think we can get 10 years of above trend returns. In, in, in 15 years, this will be just like just like any other market, to be honest. It'll be a boring old man market and, and all your friends will have some of their 401ks in it. Compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. It's not about, so if you start on year one with 10,000 bucks and you're compounding at 30%, which is a third less than we think you're going to do, by year five, you've tripled your, tripled your money. By year 10, you've done a 13X. At 50%, after year five, you've done a 6X. After 10 years, you've done a 33X. At 100%, after five years, you've done a 32X. And then it kicks in. Then it goes after burner. After 10 years, you've turned $10,000 into $10,240,000. This is the Ed Sakota type. Like, you, this is the play. Our strategy has done on average 100% a year, and it should do that for at least the next seven to 10 years, at least, I think. Um, maybe it moves faster than that, but at least the next five years, we're going to do so well. Now, my goal for you is the same as the goal for myself. I want the ability to do whatever I want, whenever I want, with whoever I want, for as long as I want. And I want to do that free from worry or fear about money. And money is just a tool to buy time or freedom. Most, most people go through life using their time to buy money, to, to spend it to live. I want to do the opposite. I want to use money to buy time. Compounding. Compounding, bros. Trading systems do not get any better than this. They get different. They get different return streams. And we'll talk a little bit about that. They get different, what's called skew. They get different diversification. But with this, you push a few buttons, you leave it alone, you never look at it again. There's a great chance it's going to double your money this year, next year, the year after that. 
now that you've seen how powerful this system is, how about I show you how easy it is to set up and use? It takes zero technical skills, zero trading background. If you can open a web browser or use Netflix, you can use this system to double your money this year, every year after that. And I'm going to prove it to you right now by showing you literally every step. So we put a lot of thought into security and, and you know, we've got all these third-party security audits and we've got a dedicated uh, um, uh, sysadmin type in, in DevOps, like a DevOps specialist. And our VP of engineering used to design um, online banking applications for a major bank. So it's gone overboard on security. And we've got like a hardware module stored inside Google's facility. And the API keys are encrypted using this big RSA ES dash OAEP with a 4096 bit key and an SHA 512 digest user trips. 142 level three certified hardware security module stored securely in Google's cloud secret manager. What that means is that I can't get access to your API keys. No one in the company can get access to your API keys without physically going to Google's premises. The exchanges cover 99% of people. We've onboarded DYDX, which is a distributed exchange, which you can use from the US. You connect your exchange account um, using generating an API key from inside your broker, your exchange brokerage, and you enter it into our software here. And you can use Binance, Bybit, KuCoin, BitGet, DYDX now. And we've got plenty more on the on the drawing board. What happens is the system recognizes that funds are in the account. At 0, 0, 0, 0 Greenwich Mean Time the next day, it'll say, hey, you put 10 grand in. Fucking A, let's ball. And it starts trading with that 10 grand. If you say, well, this is going really good, I'll put some more money in. You don't have to tell me. You don't have to email support. You don't have to do any any bullshit. At 0, 0, 0, 0 Greenwich Mean Time the next day, it goes, hey, Scott put in another 10 grand. Fuck yeah, let's ball harder. Let's say I want to take some money out. Had a good day. I want to buy my wife a... Diamond ring, whatever the fuck. I don't have to email support and ask for permission or like you have to do with a hedge fund. I'm, I'm pulling some money out of uh, Mulvaney at the moment. I've got forms to fill out and, and, and print out and sign and notarize and fax. And you don't have to do any of that. You withdraw whatever you want from the trading account and the system goes zero, 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 Greenwich Mean Time. Okay, Scott pulled 10 grand out, bought his wife a ring. Let's just trade with what we got left. And so because of this, you don't need to be in touch with support. To, you don't have to ask my permission. It's your money. The The API key gives us permission to trade your account, but not, not to withdraw or transfer any money. So there's no way that anyone can pull money out of your account. Zero possibility that we can access. You have total and complete control. You can stop trading at any time. You can stop trading from FinRev, or you can stop trading from logging into your Binance account or your KuCoin and just clicking close all positions. Um, you remain in total control of your funds. An API, I want to repeat, an API key cannot, can only trade, it cannot transfer. And this is what your dashboard looks. So the dashboard's pretty simple. Um, we're about to make this look a bit nicer. That's been on the drawing board, but we wanted to concentrate on making you money. So this is the amount that you put in, which is the money you put in less the money you've taken out in profits. This is your market value. And this is your net profit. That's pretty much everything you need to see at a glance with an equity curve. You click on portfolio and it'll tell you all the things that you currently own, all the things that you trade. So you've got 100% full transparency. You have access to your entire trade log of your account. You can also see this in your exchange, but we provide it in a much easier way. So you click on any one of these bad boys and it brings up a chart. The, um. It brings up a chart. It brings up your position history, the position sizes by date. And these are what we call the forecasts and combined forecasts, which I'm going to dig into in a minute. The trade history tab shows you every trade execution and price. So you could just get this from, by logging into your exchange account, but you can get it easy. You can just click on Ethereum and see every move we've made in Ethereum going all the way back. Super easy. So let's get a little bit nerdy. Stick with me for five minutes while I'm going to go nerd mode. And uh, I'll go for, I'll, I'll, I'll go from Thug Scott to Professor Scott. And the more you know how it works, the easier it is to stick with, basically. That, that's, and that's the truth. The more you understand trend following, the easier trend following becomes. Okay. This solid blue line here, this is called a forecast. If the forecast is positive, 
we're betting that it's going to go up. If the forecast is negative, we're betting that it goes down. Pretty simple, right? Like this is very, very simple. We take six different types of trend following systems and we average them together to get one number that rules them all. Now, what this does by using six numbers, which in turn are six different forecasts. So we're taking 36 different trend following forecasts, putting them into one number. So that if any one number is wrong, it's got very little effect. So we're improving the robustness, the reliability of the system by averaging multiple systems. This is key. This is best practice quant finance, right? And this makes the returns predictable and reliable. Now, how much money it makes depends on how much the account wiggles. We can turn that up to crazy, crazy levels. And our CTO, Timon, he's got his running at some stupid, stupid leverage that I would never allow clients to do. And he's done like, he's done like retarded levels. Um, I'll bring up his. I'll bring up his account and show you show you when we're when we're done. But like, it's just insane what he's done. But you can you can choose a custom volatility target that's tailored for you. So personally, I think most of our clients are between thirty five and fifty percent volatility target. Some of them are a little bit overboard. Ian, what are you running at? You're, you're like an NFT guy, so you run at sixty, right? No, I'm running at fifty. 50 is about where sensible people stop. Um, Timon's running past 100. Um, but some altcoins are, are like 3,000 volatility assets. So, so it's still less volatile than, than altcoins. So anyway, so we, we can tailor this for your situation. If your retirement's in three years, you cannot be taking too many big risks because what if you're in drawdown when you need the money? If you're a 30 or 40-year-old guy, you have plenty of time. You can push the boat out risk-wise. If you've got a stable cash flow income, you can take a bit more risk. If this is a small percentage of your net wealth, you can take a bit more risk. If this is a large percentage of your net wealth, oh, I'd encourage you to take a little bit less risk. Like So so everyone's different and we're going to cater for you. So it gets even better. So, th so this is, is how best practice hedge funds do things. So let me show you. It's probably easier if I show you. So this is Bitcoin. This is the composite weights of all our various six different signals. We've got moving average crossovers. We've got MACD. We've got Bollinger Momentum. We've got a thing called Floor Ceiling, which our uh, institutional trader, Laurent Bernou, who's a famous guy with a good book on it, um, gave this to us. Normalized Momentum from a famous hedge fund trader called Robert Carver and Breakouts. Now, when a signal is doing better than the other signals, it gets more weight. It gets more money. When it's doing worse... It gets less money. You can see that this signal here, this floor ceiling, it was performing like crap, getting like 7% of the, it, it was getting 5% of, of the allocation, but now it's coming good. Go you good thing. And so if we look at our individual breakout for, forecasts, we see the same thing. So we have no idea of knowing is a 10-day breakout better than a 20-day breakout, better than a 40-day, better than an 80-day, better than a 160-day we just throw them all in and let math sort it out. So right now, breakout 40 is leading the race and it has 27% of the breakout things. Breakout 320 has 20%. Breakout 160 has 186. Breakout 10, surprisingly good, actually. And these other two are lagged, so they get less money. And you can see the sharp ratio on Bitcoin alone of all our individual forecasts. Now, typically on now I'm going to get nerdy here. Typically on traditional finance, on my on my traditional finance trend following, you expect sharp ratios on individual instruments of around 0.2. So so individually, you're looking at at you know six times the sharp ratio on an individual thing. And it's not just that. Sometimes Bitcoin is is doing really well for trend following. Sometimes Ethereum is doing better or whatever. We weight the amount of capital that this gets allocated according to how good the, the coin is performing on our systems. So you can see in in the early days of the of the bull, of, of the rally, Bitcoin broke out first. It was it was having two point eight percent of the of the portfolio weight, whereas now everything else is mooning. Bitcoin's down just a little bit below one percent. And it's kind of like if you're always betting on the car that's winning the race. Whenever a new car takes the lead, we put more money towards betting that that car's going to win. So it's like a winner's a grinner situation. And 
you know, there's a reason why we don't just get rid of the poor, poor performing signals again. It's a math thing, but also it's a humility thing. I don't want to think that I can know what's the best set of parameters because I don't know shit about fuck. What I want to do is say, if this is performing well right now, it gets more money. As that starts to perform less, it gets less money. I, I don't want to have, I don't want to be in the predicting business. It's too complicated for that. I'm not smart enough. For it. I want to be in the observing business where I say, if it's making money, I'll put more money into it. Now, let's look at how that plays out. This is what it looks like with equal weighting without that kind of fitting process. And you can see that the drawdowns are quite severe. This is before costs and after costs. Whereas after doing that, it turns what would normally be a drawdown into just sideways periods. And this dramatically lowers drawdowns when you do it in a backwards looking way, but when you don't do it, when you do it in a completely backwards looking way with no, no, no look ahead bias. Now, the same thing applies to individual coins. Like you can see here that Bitcoin has 10 times the weight of Sol because Bitcoin was outperforming Sol. It's not that's if we look at that right now, that's probably a cool thing to look at. You can see that Solana was really four fifths of fuck all, and now it, it's at uh, it's at four percent. I wonder why, because it's printing. So this reweighting happens automatically, right? Like this is an automated process. This isn't this, is, this isn't like I like Solana, I hate Bitcoin. This it isn't like that. This is a maths thing. Now, big thing that we've discovered, the big thing that that really has made me very well known in the trend following community now is that trend following works better on altcoins with higher volume and lower volatility returns. So this is our correlation with our next day returns, which is a bit nerdy. So what it means is this is higher is better. Higher is more predictive. And we've split our coins up into 10 different chunks by volatility decile. So this is the, the quietest 10% of coins. This is the next quiet 10% of coins. And zero, 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 zero is where we're not predicting at all, where we've got a coin flip. You can see that unequivocally, the biggest, the slowest moving coins work better on trend following, which is not what I thought. And you can also see that the, the DGEN coins, the lowest 10% of coins, are a negative edge for trend following. Trend following just doesn't work on them. This is not how it works in traditional finance. And this is heresy. Like when I showed this to hedge fund guys, they're like, oh boy, this is a game changer. And we see this universally. Um, this is all of the, this is 10, des 10 chunks of the coin gecko coins. Above zero is a positive edge. So this is 20 day breakouts, by the way, which is another signal. So in, in the small coins, There's a, there's a negative edge in, um, in the small coins, we, in the big coins, in the top 10% of volume on CoinGecko, we have an edge. By the time we, and, you know, there's like 13,000 coins on CoinGecko. So that's like, you know, probably the top 130. By the, by the time we, top 1300, by the time we get outside that, you can see we've got a small negative edge. And that negative edge gets better, gets worse and worse and worse. And by the time we get down to this real dog shit that's never going to see the inside of an exchange, all this on-chain meme coin crap, it's a profound negative edge. Like you bet on trend effects and you get fucked. Very interesting. And let's look at it on Binance. What we're doing here is splitting Binance up into 10 chunks um, on, on liquidity. This, this is by volume in, 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 instead of uh, volatility. We've got three lines. The red line is the return one day out. The green line is the return two, between one and two days, and the, the blue line is the return two and three. Now, I know this is complicated, guys. Bear with me. What we want to see is bottom left to top right is a strong edge. And you can see that this is the case for the top 10% of Binance coins. This line starts to flatten out, flattens out, flattens out. It's a little bit wiggly, but it's way flatter here than here. Less of an edge outside the top 10%. And this is the big innovation. And... When we started trading, Binance and Bybit outperformed KuCoin and BitGet. This was a major concern to me. So 
we rolled out universe changes to take it accounting to that. That's what this research was. And for the last 90 days, it's not that Binance is yellow, Bybit is blue. These were the best by far. Now they're the worst. And by the way, today we're rolling out those same changes to Binance and Bybit. We just wanted to do it incrementally. And, and so these exchanges, which I was a bit dodgy, honestly, about BitGet, KuCoin, BitGet and KuCoin are the best. And so is DYDX, the distributed exchange, absolutely phenomenally good. These are the top performers. And, you know, we learn more, we get better and better. Um, it's not that Binance and Bybit were underperforming. In fact, all the data I've shown you has been from Binance account. So I haven't over-egged the pudding. I've shown you the data from the worst possible exchanges. And it's not that Binance and, and Bybit were bad. It's that the others are good. Now, DYDX is the top performing exchange. It's anonymous. You don't need a username and password. It's got no know your customer stuff. You don't have to give them your passport. We love this DEX. I fucking love it. Now, the next improvement that we're rolling out in the new year, which is so good, thanks to James, is we're adding cross-sectional carry. Now, you'll notice that our edges are sideways, make money, sideways, make money, sideways, make money, whereas cross-sectional carry, which is uh, cross-sectional carry is make money nearly all the time, then shit the bed briefly. Make money nearly all the time, shit the bed briefly. Make money nearly all the time, shit the bed briefly. Make money nearly all the time. So we're going to blend these together. These are a very, very good combination because it reduces the inherent problem that people don't like about trend is that it goes sideways for a while and then makes a lot of money. People don't like the sideways for a while. We've got a huge, huge rollout for the next year. Now, if you're a little lost and confused, good. I wouldn't expect you to understand this. Like, I am such a nerd. And, and I'll go back now from Professor Scott back to Thug Scott. Now, it, it, it took us two years to sort this out. And, and, and there's thousands of hours and a big team and super smart guys. The point is that you know all this work is happening in the background. This is what's responsible for making you all the money. You don't need to understand every detail. That's why we automated the whole thing so you don't have to think about it. That's also why I've created a whole university around this topic. So if you want to be an expert, if you want to be me, I support that. It does make it easier to live with. I want you to be educated as you can, whether you want it to be a black box that prints money and you don't check, or you want to know every exhaustive detail. Who's impressed so far? I, uh, we've built what I believe is the ongoing, the ultimate platform for ongoing trading system development. There is absolutely no doubt this is the finest trading infrastructure ever offered to retail traders. And this is far better than what exists in most hedge funds. And if you're still here and this is interesting to you, let me tell you how you can put it to work for yourself and get on your way to doubling your money this year too. 100X Coin Club, where we're aping into these degenerate meme coins and, and like doing stupid things. You know, buy, buying five grand and turning it into 80 grand and, and you know, bonk was even better. And we're doing all, all this like really crazy high-risk stuff. My idea is the Nassim Taleb barbell strategy, where you pair the riskiest possible thing you can do with the safest possible thing you can do. And together, they even out. So what I want to do and what I'm going to do to, to turn this five grand into a million dollars, I'm going to take that stupid mean coin money, I'm going to toss it in thin red, thin red that degenerate leverage, and this is an iconic combination. This is a hookers and blow level combination. You just wouldn't take blow without a rugby scrum or hookers present. You just wouldn't do it. You wouldn't eat a burger without fries. And you wouldn't do 100X coin club without FinRev. And, you know, time and money are more precious today than ever. So let me say a big thank you for showing up today and listening to my line of bullshit. And because you believe in crypto, because you can see the opportunity it presents, and because you've given me your time today, and because you're here right now, I'm going to make you an incredible, unbeatable offer to put this thing for, to work for you. On the, on the 1st of January, I'm starting ads again, which we haven't done in years. Our pricing's going up, which is only right, considering we've got $3 million under management, we've got distributed exchanges, we've got proven system, which has actually performed at, even through the bear market, it was sharp 1.5, which is unheard of. The new pricing in January, you get two and a half years of trend falling only for $6,500 on a standard 40% volatility target, no customization. Or... You can have trend plus the new cross-sectional carry system 
with multiple exchange redundancy and the ability to run multiple all targets. So you can have a safe one and a degenerate one and, and, and all of that. You can have a, an aggressive and a conservative and you can slice and dice it the way you want. If you want that level of customization, not everyone will, that's 9,500. After the 2.5 years are up, we're not going to charge you again. We're going to just take 2% of the account balance and 20% of the profits you have every year. And that's exactly the same way every hedge fund in the world charges. So 2 and 20, we're, we're moving towards in, inside two years will be a hedge fund. So if you want to, if you want to, if you want that deal on the 1st of January, well, well, well that's still a great deal. But it, for you right here, right now, you can beat January. And here's the deal. Part one of the incredible deal is you can have three years of fully automated trading for $5,000. You can beat the $6,500 price risk, $5,000 for three years. You get the addition of cross-sectional carry, which we're going to charge extra for. You get it for free, and others can only get it by buying the premium package in January. You're worried about getting ripped off by an exchange? You're worried about getting FTXed? We'll let you split your risk up between three exchanges. You're worried about tax man, the ex-wife, the creditors? Wolf at the door, just a bit sneaky guy by nature. Well, we'll let you hide your gains in a dex. They don't even know who you are. They don't know your name, your username. There's no, they don't even know your email address. If you're paranoid about all this stuff, we'll let you trade a higher volatility target and keep only half your money on exchange and the rest in a secure wallet of your choice. Now, once those three years are up, I'm not going to come back and fuck you again and, and ask for more money. How much am I going to charge you after the three years are up? We're going to charge you 20% of the profits we make together and 2% of you. So I'm moving. This is an audacious plan of mine. We're going to be the world's first fully distributed hedge fund on the blockchain. Pretty cool. It's my dream. It's my dream. I'm not fucking around here. And it's cost us millions and millions in R&D. We're ready to bet the company that you make money. If you don't get rich, I shouldn't either. If you don't get rich, I should be broke. So here's the deal. You get for five thousand dollars. You get three years of automated algorithmic trading with Finrev. You get VIP onboarding with one of our expert crypto trader coaches. You get all the statistics and monitoring that I've shown you today. You get cross-sectional carry. You get a customized volatility target. You can delay starting or pause at any time. Multiple exchanges, and we're adding more and more all the time. And the double your money guarantee. If you aren't in profit after your first twelve months using the system, we'll let you use it for free until you've doubled your money. Now, these calls fill up fast, so you can go to finrev.trade slash call and book a call. So go here, fill out our quick intake form, which just gives us some insight into your investing plans, how we can best assist you. The enrollment team are ready and waiting to get you onboarded. It's a very, very quick process. They'll get you sorted. This is not some sort of high-pressure sales call. This is just not signing up for anything other than a quick chat with the enrollment team. They can answer every question you've got. Everyone in the company uses the system. Ian uses the system. I use the system. Everyone uses the fucking system. Um, we all know it. We all understand it. We all believe in it. We're all, bet we're all betting our futures on it. Um, the deadline is December 31st, midnight, Eastern Standard Time. If you haven't got the funds now, get the deal and, and just, you know, pay deposit or whatever. And when you're ready to start trading, we'll, we'll take your time from then. There is absolutely no hurry. You can pause and stop at any time. You know, let's say that you see this incredible mean coin opportunity. You want to stop your FinRev, dump it in that, triple it, stick it back in FinRev. You can zig and zag and yank and bank. And, and I, I don't really recommend doing that, but you, you can if you want. I know it's your daddy. So let's go over it again. It's three years of automated algorithmic trading with FinRev, VIP onboarding, comprehensive statistics, cross-sectional carry system, which is game changer, customized volatility targets. So you can set it as mild or as wild as you want. You can delay starting or pause anytime, multiple exchanges that double your money guarantee. If you aren't in profit after your first 12 months using the system, we'll let you use it for free. And yeah. You know, the five-year vision is for all of us to be rich, for all of us to keep the bull market gains, splitting up between centralized exchanges and decks so you're not vulnerable to exchanges. DeFi trading, like with DYDX, but more so you can be anonymous, so you can keep your coins on a hardware wallet instead of having to, to trust an exchange, adding carry cross-sectional momentum, mean reversion, on-chain alpha. We've got all kinds of plans. 
the huge team that's that's going to improve the execution algo, that's likely to be a really big lever on performance. You can choose which combinations of systems you want, design a system that completely suits you and your needs. And in a strong bull or a strong bear market, nothing is likely to be as good as what we have right now. So I'm inviting you to join me to do this for the long term. While people are booking their calls, um, I'd like to, uh, uh, can, can someone call out a coin, a, a, a coin that's like in the top 100? And let's, and let's take a look at how FinRev's done it. Um, Ian, you want to you want to you want to field that and let me know, and then and then field some questions. There we go, some Sol Avax near. All right, let's do, let's check it out. Sol Avax and near. Okay, let's look at. You want to look at the last year, the last let's let's look at the last six months. Okay. We got long right here. Stayed long until it started to go bad, and then we wound out of our position, making a small loss, making a small profit, sorry. So we're from from, from here. To here, like very small profit. This is the nature of trend when when it goes sideways. It doesn't make, it doesn't lose, it just sort of goes to it. We have a, a, a short trade, short here, out here for a small loss. Then we're buying Sol at 20 bucks, upping the position, downing the position when it looked like it, it, it went down to 21 bucks, and then adding position. And we're at maximum position. At 23 bucks, we are staying balls to the wall, maxed out, maxed out, maxed out, maxed out, maxed out, maxed out, maxed out. We're just starting to trim a little bit off as it's gone ballistic all the way up to 80, all the way up to nearly 80 bucks. And where are we today? An average long position is 10, maximum long position is 20. So we're at Slightly strong, long position. Let's look at AVAX. Same deal. So we're short here. Get out of our short here for just a small profit. Get long. Get out of our long for a small loss. And the point that I want to make here is if you're a manual trader, let's say I like AVAX, I've gotten in the AVAX, how likely are you to say, Five days later, no, fuck it, I was wrong. You're just not going to do it. No one's that good. So we get long, say, oh, no, that was a wrong idea. Better get short. And then that looked good for a little minute. And then, oh, fuck, that was wrong. So we flip on a dime. And we get long. We get long right here at 10 bucks. Long at AVAX at 10 bucks. Here we are at $45. Now, because we're trading, you know, 100 coins at a time, these positions are all small. And... If you think about it, that seems like it's not the smart play, but you need some luck for a coin to go up. How do we remove the impact of luck is by taking many, many swings of bat. Trading 100 coins is taking 100 swings of bat every single day. And so we didn't quite get to max out position. We've got 16.6. We pulled off some position in here, and then we smoothly ramped it up when it started to go. And now here we're at 16.5, so a mid-long position, and now we're ramping a little bit off. We're backing it back. We're selling out. We're banking our profits. The last one was near. And you can see the same same thing. You know, we got long here, um, held, a, held a position all the way through, done better than my own personal trading with this coin. But now let's look. Instead of the last two months, let's look for the last five years. Let's look at... Let's look at how it go in the bull market. In the 2021 madness. Pretty fucking cool, right? 
take a minute to chew. All right. In when was that? July 2021. We're getting long. And this is our position size. You can see it ramps it up. While it's got a good profit, it's it's maintaining some long position, banking a lot of profits, wiggling it up and down all the way until here. So we stay long from here until here. Take a quick short. Probably made a tiny bit of money. Made a quick long. Oh, fuck, that's not working. Better get out. Quick short for three days. Lost a little, lost a tiny bit of money here. And you can see it's very quick to recognize when it's wrong. And then we get long here. And now we're making good money and we're out of the bull market here. So we stay long most of the way, like 90% of the way we're long from here until here, which is, you know, if you look as a manual discretionary chart reading guy, that's probably what you'd want to do in a perfect world. So what this does is it gets us to perfect world kind of stuff. Pretty close. It's it's as good as me on my best day, but it does it a hundred things at a time. Um, Ian, questions, man. Questions. It's nothing held back day. Uh, and you guys should be booking those calls because they're going to fill up finrev.trade forward slash call. Hey, man, sorry. <laughs> Just doing a couple of things. You caught me off guard a little bit. You it's not good, brother. Scroll through the, the messages. So, um, can we just clear up? I think that you might have said that there was payment plans, and but I don't think there is. Can we just get a definitive on that? Um, there's there's payment plans available. Like we like the the onboarding team are pretty flexible. Just talk to them about it. They uh, um, I took it off the slides because some people tr tried to say, oh, I, a payment plan means that it's that. Scott said it was only two thousand five hundred on the webinar. Scott didn't say that, and and then and then the onboarding team got the shit. So they asked me to pull it out. So there's definitely payment plans available. They're really flexible. Um, nice. Um, Jeff Lloyd, can you get the hundred X Coin Club plus Finrev? Yeah, absolutely. Merry fucking Christmas, dude. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, Ryan, if you're broke, can we just pay the 20 and 10 from the beginning? If you want to put 100 grand in, yeah. Anyone who wants to put 100, a 20 and 2, by the way. Anyone who wants to put 100 grand in, you pay 2 and 20. I'm totally cool with that. Um, but if you're broke, you probably don't have 100 grand. So, no. Okay. Um, so, Tony ha has a good question. For FinRev, it's suboptimal below $2,000. I wouldn't recommend it for $2,000. And also... You t put two thousand dollars in, you double it. That's not the play. Hundred X Coin Club is the play. You know, this week, I've, uh, this week I turned five grand into eighty grand. You can't do that with Finrev or anything sensible. Like, like Hundred X Coin Club is the furthest thing from a sensible investment strategy. Hundred X Coin Club is enormously fun, degenerate gambling with an edge where we're winning like automated winning machines. If you've only got a, if you've only got a thousand bucks, just do that. Um, Steve, yes, you can. Yes, you can, my friend. That is my gift to you, my Christmas gift to you. Um, okay, uh, Yan K, when we get the signals, what percentage of capital do we allocate for each signal? Okay, this is a interesting question. You don't want to get into the weeds with that. What you want to do is say, overall, in my whole account, what you really care about is how much your account wins. You don't care about how much bit your Bitcoin position wiggles. You care about how much money you make, if you're smart anyway. So we take the overall target volatility for the whole account and we work out how much does Bitcoin wiggle? Bitcoin wiggles a little compared to, say, um, some smaller coin, which was Shiba, which wiggles a lot. And, and we do a mathematical calculation. We convert, uh, uh, let me get a bit nerdy here. Volatility is always... Um, related to the square root of time. So we convert a daily volatility forecast to an annualized volatility forecast by multiplying it by the square root of the number of trading days in a year, which is 19.2. Um, it's a little bit more nuanced than that, but 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 that's a... Uh, um, and so right now, let's look at how signals are allocated. Let me show you... Um, 
let's have a look at say Neo, which we were just on. So Neo right now is a portfolio weight of 2% of the account. It's been as high as 4.12 and it's been as low as 1.2. Um, Perry, I wonder how it handled Wi-Fi. Let's go to the videotape. Oh. Um. Okay. So the, the little dot plots are... And Wi-Fi was pump and dump, so I wouldn't expect it to make money on this. Let's zoom out a bit so we see. Um, the, the individual dot plots are our individual forecasts. They get averaged into this line. Let's go back to make it, you said, over the last year. Let's look at it over the last year. All right. We are long here. Trimming position there. And out of our long here, small uh, small win. We are short here, got it wrong, small loss. We are long here, got it wrong, small loss. We are short here, small win. We are long here, starting to bank off position, medium win. We are short here and out of it, small win or small loss. Hard to tell. This will be a small win or a small loss, small win or small loss. And this is the nature of trend when we're going sideways, right? Like it's small wins and small losses, small beats. We are long, doing okay, banking off. That's probably about a bank-even trade. Now we're short. Looks good for a minute. We get out of it. We get short again. This is a decent trade now. So we're short here, working off our position here and out of it here for a reasonable win. Small loss, small loss, nothing burger. Probably a break-even trade. Now we're short. And we're making good money. We're staying short, staying short. That's a really good trade. Working out of our position and we're long right here. Long here. Working off position, adding position. Oh, fuck you. Yeah. We're getting this, but then it got rug pulled. The next, now let's zoom in on this because I think this is interesting. So this is, how does it handle a rug pull? Really good question, Luz. So what was the forecast here? The forecast was 14.8. So we're reasonably strong. It's gone up to 15.3. The next day this happens. It's dropped it back to 11.7. So it's wiped out from 15.3 down to 11.7. It's dropped about 30%. Down to 8.72. So now it's a below average long position. We're still long, but it's below average. Now we've got 3.19, which is a nothing burger position. And now we're out here. So overall, because we got long here, it would have been a medium sized win. It would have been a medium sized win. Um, that's a really good question. Yeah, really great question, um, Perry. Yeah, really great question. Yeah, cross-sectional momentum, cross-sectional carry. You get in before the end of the year, you get everything that we're rolling out in upgrades for the year, um, the relative value stuff we've got, and and um, the cool stuff that I can't talk about it because um, Macrocephalopod showed me and, and it would be um, rude to talk about his secret sauce. Nice. Um, guys, I, I think we're, we've taken up enough of everyone's time. Like, you guys should book a call. Um, this is the shit. Honestly, uh, this is the greatest thing I've ever built. It's the only way to keep the money from crypto. I, 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 I fumbled the bag in 2018. I fumbled the bag. I had great money, and I fumbled the bag. Um, my FinRev account, a couple of hundred grand, not too much. Yeah, I, I, I allocate more. Um, it's not not particularly not particularly exciting. Um, I'm going to allocate more 
and turn up the leverage on it? I think just one thing that you haven't mentioned, Scott, is every three months you host um, Ask Me Everything, of which people can turn up and any question about FinRev, the performance or anything like that. We've just recently had the second Ask Me Anything. So top of my head, we're somewhere in February for the next one. So we've got the FinRev group where all the members interact and just discuss kind of the general day to day. We've obviously got the support as well. We've got the coaches who are not just some people that turn up. These are traders. Myself, all of the coaches were in FinRev as well. And then as well as that, like I said, we have these AMAs every three months where you can turn up and you can say, oh, you, you said this. And there's absolutely nothing held back uh, there as well. So we keep looking after you once you're inside with us as well. Guys, don't ask for permission to to edit that document. That's going to piss off James. Uh, it's James's document, it's not mine. So, so you know, if you want to edit it, make a copy, look at yourselves. Um, but but this is the kind of this is the kind of research that we do. This is an example of what research looks like in our firm. We're not half assed We're proper quants. It's like proper maths nerd stuff. Um, so if you want to if you want to look at all of this, um, could you address tax tracking? No, I fucking won't. Fuck you. No way. I'm not getting involved in that. Do I look like an accountant? Actually, I, am an, I have an accounting degree, but but um, no, you shouldn't ask fat guys on the internet um, about taxes. You should ask your own accountant for that. That's, nice. that's nonsense. Guys, thank you so much for your time. Awesome. Cheerio.